What's up, guys? It is Thursday, January 5th. It's 11.15 a.m. And this is a crypto newsletter. So a lot of big things sharing today. So you're going to want to watch all the way through because when we get into the Harvard thing and then a couple other things in here, you're going to be like, yeah, I own the right coins. But Bitcoin is around two months away from entering its longest bear market in history. You know what that tells me? That tells me that we're so close to a bottom here. It's not even funny. I feel as if like when we really pop out of this low, it's going to go fast because we've been just going down for over a year now. It's the second, you know, we're, we're close to the longest bear market in history and we've been dragging out. We've been going down for so long now and it feels like it's just never going to be ending. But I believe we're right around the corner. We have some fireworks. So get ready for that. And if you haven't already, Go to stargate-ventures.com. The link will be in the bio. Get your free crypto masterclass accelerator. We extended it. A lot of people loved it. So I wanted to keep it open and offer that free access. Cause if you don't already know where we've been in the past to where we're at, to where we're at right now, to where we're headed, now's the time to start learning because we're at the doorstep of where we're headed. So you need to get kind of caught up on the past to where we're at now. Cause just in a few months here, we're headed into a new kind of paradigm. So free crypto masterclass accelerator, stargate-ventures.com, be on the homepage. Just click the button there, enter a little bit of info, and you'll get immediate access to that. So two months away from entering the longest bear market in history, pretty soon here, I think we're going to be wrapped up with the, the bear market. Then we have Harvard FinTech Online Short Course. So Dr. Jesh, Meta, MBA, the road to US digital dollar an integrated cross-border payment solution. You have our first possible step by the feds to issue a US CBDC in August of 2021. So that was the first step. And then we're we're in like this phase, but now we've had it in 2023 with Fed now. They said in the first half of 2023, it was like by July of 2023, Fed now is officially gonna be launched. That's huge. That's something that we've been waiting for since 2018. We thought it was going to be in like 2021 and then they extended it out. This is huge news Fed now coming out, but also this PowerPoint is huge because it lays out what they think. Harvard is the two blockchains that are going to be the backbone, which we've been saying for a long time now, the next gen financial system here. So Introduction, prompt statement, proposed solution, background across border transfer terminology, fundamental differences between fiat and digital transactions, the current cross border transfer infrastructure, proposed solution, digital dollar evolution and why digital dollar, salient features of a digital dollar, what is a blockchain, basics of XLM and XRP. Why would they give the basic XLM and XRP and not Bitcoin and Ethereum if, if XLM and XRP weren't going to be the backbone to these, right? AI and machine language terminologies, the proposed integrated solution, concluding remarks. So it talks about it right here, the fundamental difference, but we can go down and we can read about XRP and XLM. So why digital dollar currency? Let's start. So the digital... 21st century is underserved by an analog reserve currency. Digital dollar would help future proof the greenback and allow individuals and global enterprises to make payments in dollars irrespective of space and time. Huge. Blockchain technology is sufficiently matured to address needs of a fiat currency in the digital format. In addition, AI and machine language are evolving rapidly. Foreign exchange trading platforms are now AI and somewhat machine language compatible. Smartphone and internet-based global national trade have expanded significantly to the tune of a trillion dollars in 2020. Two blockchain-based protocols, Ripple XRP and Stellar Lumens XLM, are gaining popularity as the coins of choice for many in international businesses. It seems that a digital dollar will provide a missing front end to facilitate international trade robustly, less expensively, and safely. So what is a digital dollar and what are the salient features? goes into it all here. It talks about USD Tether, Gemini Dollar, it talks about the stable coins, but let's keep going down. Basics of XLM and XRP blockchains. Stellar and the attendant native cryptocurrency Lumens are interesting concepts. In simplest terms, XLM is a global currency, like currency without borders that can be redeemed in any fiat currency of your choice. Less that be dollars, British pounds, bitcoins, or Indian rupees. In fact, 
According to Stellar Communication, Anonymous, it has no owner. If anything, it is owned by the public. The software runs across a decentralized open network and handles millions of transactions each day. Like Bitcoin and Ethereum, Stellar relies on blockchain to keep the network in sync, but the end user experience is more like cash. Stellar is much faster, cheaper, and more energy efficient than typical blockchain-based systems. Then it goes into Ripple XRP. Ripple protocol is able to process secure and reliable transactions in a matter of seconds. The length of time required for one round of consensus to complete, these transactions are provably secure up to the predetermined bounds. Admittedly, due to its protocol consensus algorithm, it is super fast and is more amenable to transfer payments than Bitcoin. I mean, we're talking global currency and we're talking about for Stellar and then we're talking about a the true vision of what Bitcoin was supposed to be, they're saying XRP is. Harvard, Harvard. Blockchain-based digital currency flow path. They have a whole patent ready to go. Look, they got the Masonic, like, what is it? The compass. They got the Masonic compass there as the architect. Transaction processing network. Then it goes into it all. It's talking about um, just everything that the key mechanics, the, the underpinnings to all of this, the system that they had laid out. And this is back in May 14, 2020, a simple blockchain-based cross-border digital currency transaction using XRP or XLM. The two big kahunas, the golden gooses, I'm telling you. So, and Harvard's telling us now too, we don't even need validation anymore. If we keep going down here, it says a roadmap to digital dollar, the sender initiate. So it talks about the steps. So it talks about salutary aspects and shortcomings, advantages, the proposed solution, leverages practically all the technical features of blockchain, uh, machine learning, AI, and foreign exchange trading. It offers an immutable, transparent, and fraud-proof mechanism for cross-border fund transfer. It is not subject to volatility in foreign exchange markets. This transfer could be instantaneous or at a future date, and it is controlled by the sender and receiver. Political instability, IMF interventions, say in Asian contagion times, or a sudden withdrawal of notes by a sovereign entity, say India removal of rupees on thousands and rupees 500 notes, do not affect the transaction. The machine learning and smart contract features allow development of foreign exchange hedging schemes to the benefit of the sender or a receiver. So shortcomings. Initial capital layout to develop the proposed infrastructure may be high. Many may not be cons- conservant with these technologies, so adaptation may be difficult. Government sanctions and intervention can disrupt the complete process chain. For example, XRP is still being investigated by the SEC. Once that case wraps up, it's game over. So that is huge. Absolutely huge. So now let's jump into the next thing from the Bank of International Settlements right here. So DeFi regs are almost ready. It appears the BIS has... Cr- has created a definition. Once the definitions are accepted and codified, it's game on for DeFi. That's right, Mr. Man. So let's see what the BIS has to say. Now, let me, I'm I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, (laughs) question of the conference already. Just as a a quick reminder, does safe DeFi require, it's a pretty clear opinion on that later on, but my opinion is absolutely not. If you uh, read the question again, does safe DeFi require CBDC? It's like saying, does safe, Right? And when we take DeFi as being really decentralized, and certainly it's a no. But I, I, again, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that, but I'm doing it. Let me propose a different question. <laughs> Could a CBDC in a DeFi ecosystem be mutably beneficial? Because I think that's a much more interesting question, to be honest. Right? Are there benefits? At DeFi, um, I think it's a maybe, because Certainly, even though there is, a, is room for completely decentralized protocols, when you look at the current state of DeFi, there are many more centralized stablecoins, off-chain collateral. And when you have an off-chain collateralized stablecoin where some entity promises you to deliver uh, USD, then a CBDC is just strictly better than that. In most of these centralized stablecoins, you, al- you also have functions where you can black. We probably would see that in a CBDC as well, but that's not different. It's, it's the exact same thing. But you get rid of one risk the counterparty risk. And in many cases with some, uh, in that sense, it could actually be great for DeFi because clearly there is a demand for centralized stablecoins and I, I don't see why there shouldn't be a demand for it. But also, 
So they're really mapping it out. It's not like a fad. I mean, we've been tied up and we're all watching these videos every day. So we see it. But a lot of people think it's a fad out there and they're they're not awake to it. So if you have people on the fence, they're trying to learn, send them over to Stargate-Ventures.com. Get them that free Crypto Masterclass Accelerator and they'll be caught up to speed. That's for sure. All right, let's keep going because, oh, look, universal basic income started in the UK now in 2023. Still think this is going to take 20 years. Still think there's much time left. Probably nothing, though. And that's very true. I mean, the world is in kind of a the world's been getting squeezed. We've been getting it from all ends. And as time goes on, there's time decay. People can't handle it. So they're, the government's going to need to support and they're going to need to give out some things that kind of ease the pain for a lot of people that are hurting right now. So. That's where the CBDC excuse comes in. And that's where the XRP and XLM adoption and rise comes in as well, too, unfortunately. But announced that this spring, millions of those on the lowest incomes will get £301 directly into their bank accounts. This is the first of several payments direct from the government to the most vulnerable people's pockets in 2023 and early 2024. In addition, there will be two more payments for low-income families of around £300, meaning they will receive up to £900. On top of this, for many pensioners, there is an extra £300. For millions of disabled people, an additional £150 payment. This all means some households could receive as much as £1,350. No one will need to apply for any of these payments as they are paid automatically. This is all part of a £26 billion pound package for 2023 and beyond to help every household in the UK with the rising cost of living. They build on similar payments sent to millions of families last year as we continue to shield those in need from global pressures fueling rising prices. So it seems like this is going to be a trend that's going to continue 2023 and beyond. They didn't even get, give an end date and that's in the UK, but I'm sure it's going to spread out to the rest of the countries in the world. So let's keep moving here. All right. Then we got this BitMart exchange is going to list XRP today. So we're seeing this could be the start. This could be one of the exchanges to start listing it back. The dominoes could be starting to fall here. This was a surprise seeing this. I know BitMart was like big last year or it could could be two years ago now at this point when Shiba Inu was popping off, all these like Doji Inu was popping off. So this is interesting as far as maybe we start to see some some exchanges now starting to relist XRP back and it's kind of co coinciding with close to the timeline of Flare being distributed. So maybe we could hear something over the next couple of days here, but we'll have to see. Then we have this. So worth a read if you have not already. Something to note. Wrapping your Flare and setting delegations to the Flare Oracle signal providers will enable a will enable at TDE, which is during reward epoch number one. However, FTSO rewards will not begin to accrue. So you're going to be able to stake. So just like we are wrapping our song, our songbird in Bifrost and delegating it and earning songbird, we're going to be able to do the same for Flare. So this is going to be cool right there, earning some more um, kind of passive money on our coins. Then we got this right here. So did you know that with Flare, you'll be able to claim rewards twice a week too. So Flare differs from Songbird in the reward epoch. It takes 3.5 days instead of seven days. So we got to be on top of it as far as making sure we're going back in, maybe bi-weekly claiming our rewards for our Flare as well as Songbird for uh, on every Saturday, I believe it is. Then we have Uphold will support the Flare airdrop landing next Monday. I'm so excited for the Flare airdrop. It's literally been a long time coming here. And uh, December 12, 2020, we're, we're talking over two years later now. And finally, we're here. So the floodgates are about to open. But Uphold users will receive their Flare tokens between the 9th and the 10th. And I believe you'll be able to stake on Uphold right away. I believe I got an email from them saying that. So we'll have to see on that. And then it's worth pointing out the Flare token distribution event occurs on January 9th and it's a one-time event. So we're going to get 15% of what we're supposed to get distributed to us all at once. And then over, I think it's like a 36 month period, we get like 2% each month. 
I kind of like that. It kind of builds a sense of discipline because you could, you know, get all 100% of your flair and what if you just sold it all? But instead, we're getting 15% and then we're getting like a payout every uh, a 2% every month for 36 months. That gives it time for the value in the network to uh, grow and gain traction and for us not to maybe just sell it all right when it comes. But I'm personally not selling it. I'm going to hold on to it. Because definitely, I believe Flare could be a top 10, top 5 token down the line for sure. And it's going to be interesting to see what it trades at when it comes out. But the cost to society of an unregulated crypto industry is too high to ignore. This is the ECP. Regulators should treat trading in unbacked digital assets as they would gambling activities. That's interesting. Regulators must avoid falling prey to the crypto industry's intense lobbying, steering clear of poor or incomplete regulation in the legitimization of unsound crypto models. Crypto regulation and taxation won't be enough to build solid foundations for digital finance. We need a risk-free digital settlement asset. Come on, man. A risk-free digital settlement asset. Sounds like to me a digital neutral reserve asset or bridge currency. That's why the ECB and central banks around the world are working on both retail and wholesale CBDCs. We're so, you can, you smell that? We're close to the end game here. So if you haven't already, link in the bio, stargate-ventures.com, free crypto masterclass accelerator. If you, you, you might have a sense of what's going on, but maybe you don't feel like 100%, you know, the real, the whole picture here, then dive into the course. It's free. You have nothing to lose. Free Crypto Masterclass Accelerator. There's about like 18 free videos in there where we really break it down step by step from the past and to the present day, how the system works now to where we're headed. Got You got to get that Crypto Masterclass Accelerator. So let's keep moving. That was interesting to see right there. Then we have asset tokenization, the next frontier for partnerships and banking. It's walking through the timeline and asset tokenization is next. You have all these big institutions involved with this. This stuff's not going away. As we saw from Harvard, it is the backbone. We're at the end game. From 2023 to 2025, we're going to see heavy, heavy movements and we're going to see things happen so fast. I mean, it's like we've been walking, right? And now we're going to start running 2023 and beyond. Then we have crypto trademark applications in the US 2020. You know, this was at 1,137. 2021, it like kind of more than doubled. And then 2022, uh, a little less than a double. So, but that 2022 was a down year. I'm sure 2023, if we have the bull market uh, come back in in full full form here, then this will likely be a double double or more. So, as we're seeing the traction, the it, it's taking place all across the board in so many different aspects. Then we had this from the Fed. Crypto poses key risks to banks, but carry on. Three U.S. financial regulators do not prohibit or discourage banks from providing crypto services to their customers per new statements. U.S. banks appear to have the green light for most cryptocurrency dealings, despite a number of key risks the asset class poses to trade fide operators. So the Office of Comptroller of the Currency, the FDIC, and the Fed Fed's Board of Governors had gave them the green light, but said, hey, there, there are risks involved, but you can go ahead and participate. Good news to me. I, I mean, everything's setting up. All the, all the uh, kind of things are being put in place for the CBDCs to happen and ultimately for XRP and XLM adoption per Harvard statement right here. So that's going to be it, guys. That's it for the crypto newsletter. And then today I'm going to finish up that digital public good deep dive because when I was going to record it the other day. I actually fell sick, so I didn't do that. I'm going to do that for the deep dive today. And if you haven't already, remember free crypto masterclass accelerator. The link will be in the bio, as well as click the link in the bio to join the Discord. I mean, it's wild in here. We're, we're tracking a lot of things, as well as if you haven't already, so subscribe, hit the notification button, get updated in real time. We're going to be keep pushing them out three a day, three a day, three a day. We don't stop. So I will see you guys in the Discord. Say what up. I'll say what up too. I'll see you in there.